Now, page four, the media's crucial role in spreading the unconstitutional response to the virus. It's a conspiracy. The ongoing political cooperative between the mainstream media and the Democrat machine is now on full display through the blue state government response to the Wuhan coronavirus. These governors and mayors are receiving air cover, literally, from their friends in the media as they attempt to one-up each other in imposing increasingly more and more draconian unilateral edicts attacking the constitutional liberty of residents of their states and of their cities. Think about Easter weekend. The mayor of Louisville, Kentucky, actually had a plan to assault religious liberty, all in the name of his response to the virus. Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher attempted to ban all church services on Sunday, all of them, including drive-in, drive-through, drive-by, whatever, Easter Sunday services, the most important day on the calendar for all Christians in that city of more than 600,000. Fortunately, a judge did not agree with that anti-First Amendment decree calling the mayor's order stunning and beyond reason and, of course, unconstitutional. Now, on a side note here, as your host, Graham Ledger, a.k.a. me, you know I have been very consistent on this matter. From day one, your host identified these way over-the-top responses to this pathogen is anti-free market and un-American and unconstitutional. And I have taken heat for this, but I have stayed the constitutional course. And... It's nice to see at least one lawyer dressed in a black robe validate what I have been saying during this entire episode. And I firmly believe that all these mayors and governors should be challenged and held accountable for obliterating the constitutional rights of tens of millions of Americans. Slowly, slowly, we're beginning to see the patriotic pushback to these radical politicians who, with glee, strip people of the right to assemble and to worship and to simply operate a business or go to work. It's truly Orwellian to witness temporary politicians like the governor of California come out on TV every day and say in so many words, Hi, I'm Gavin Newsom, a radical from the most radical city in the United States, and I'm here to impose my radical ideology on 35 million Americans who happen to reside in the nation's most populous state. But these governors and these mayors would not be able to get away with these bold-faced authoritarian decrees without the mainstream media. These would be mostly biased Democrat voting local reporters in big cities like New York or Chicago or Los Angeles, as well as smaller cities and towns like Austin, Sacramento and Arlington. These reporters have simply abdicated their constitutional jobs as keepers of the First Amendment. How can they even call themselves journalists, hiding behind the Bill of Rights to proffer slanted anti-Trump reporting while allowing Cuomo Newsom Pritzker to trash the very amendment that allows them the freedom to do so? It is truly George Orwell moment in this republic. The media are giving massive and free airtime to Big Brother. They don't question Big Brother. Instead, these reporters shame anyone who does not chant, when prompted, long live Big Brother. In other words, the media are enabling Gavin Newsom to seize control over the people. No questions asked, literally. The media are playing a vital role in allowing these blue state governors to respond to the Wuhan coronavirus in the most unconstitutional manner that this country has ever endured. Where we began a process of establishing more formally what it would look like and how we could begin the process uh, of the kind of incremental uh, release of the stay-at-home orders uh, that advanced the fundamental principle of keeping people healthy. Stop it. Keeping Stop it. Okay. This guy, he's, he's really got a knack for speaking volumes of words and saying very, very little. But the question that the mainstream media should be asking this guy is what proof that you have in your little pocket there somewhere stashed in that greasy head of hair, hair of yours. 
What proof do you have that anything that you have done, that you have ordered the people of California to do, what proof do you have that has done anything to mitigate the spread? Here's another question that the mainstream media will not ask this guy. When did the Wuhan coronavirus arrive on the shores of the United States? When did the Wuhan coronavirus arrive in California? Well, if you do just a cursory amount of research, there is more and more evidence that the Wuhan coronavirus arrived in California, therefore the United States, probably in the fall of 2019. I mean, we're talking October, as late as November, but probably October is when doctors began diagnosing their patients who had flu-like symptoms, most of whom were testing positive for influenza of one form or another. There are multiple forms of influenza, but they're testing positive for the flu. But there was a percentage of the people that they were testing that were not testing positive for the flu, yet they had flu-like symptoms. Okay, so now let's go back to today. What? About six months later. And we see this often talked about bell curve. And we're seeing it in California right now. And we've seen the upward trend, and we've seen the leveling off, and we're seeing now a tapering off going down. The bell curve of the virus. The number of diagnosed cases. I'm not talking about deaths. I'm talking about diagnosed cases. So we look at that bell curve. Again, what proof does the governor have that it had anything to do with his draconian or orders? There is absolutely no proof, no evidence whatsoever that anything he has done has shaped that curve. What has probably happened is that this is the natural order of the virus, that whether the governor ordered a shutdown of his society or not, and closed the beaches or not, and closed the parks or not, and closed the restaurants and the bars or not, that that bell curve would have remained the same. It's so unfortunate that we'll never be able to know for sure. We will never be able to say that that bell curve was going to be that bell curve whether this guy did anything or not. But the fact that the virus was in California, probably dating back to last year, tells us just logically that it's not Gavin Newsom who's flattening out that bell curve. It's the Wuhan coronavirus vis-a-vis -vis Mother Nature. So what's the long-term goal here for Newsom and the other radicals? It's simple. By collapsing the economy, these governors force more and more people to be dependent on what? Government. Lose your health insurance at work because the business was shut down and can't reopen? No problem. Government run health care to the rescue. No income? No problem. Here's a check. And so on and so on and so on. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.